All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome once again to another episode of the Remarkable Coach podcast. As always, I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and I'm joined today by Craig Martin. Craig is a serial entrepreneur, a business coach and consultant and recovering advertising executive, helping entrepreneurs build seven plus figure businesses and exit to freedom for the past two decades. Now on a mission to help one million entrepreneurs make an impact. Uh, Craig, welcome to the Remarkable Coach. Thank you for having me. You bet, brother. I appreciate you making time to to chat with me. Um, how I kind of like to open up this podcast, uh, I like to invite my guest to just tell us a little bit more about yourself in your own words and why it is you do what you do. Um, well, uh, the Craig Martin introduction. I um, I've been in the advertising business for over two decades. I had an advertising agency. I worked with a lot of the major brands um, from startup early stage startups to a lot of the national brands. I pivoted from that in roughly like six years ago to coaching and consulting full time. I was doing it in between. Uh, a lot of the clients that I was working with over the years. Some stuff wasn't working for me and uh, mm -hmm. the results wise I, I wasn't seeing, I think they were up to their optimal result that they could output. So the journey into coaching really started after I decided to one stop doing brainstorming sessions. You know, I, I break that out and then I further went on to stop working from creative briefs. Mm -hmm. Um, Caused a little a bit of resistance in its early stage, but then as time progressed, it was embraced by a lot of the entrepreneurs, just business owners, brands that I was working with, because they now find that digging deeper into their businesses and uncovering stuff that they didn't think about. Because most brief, they were just created by uh, from for perception. You know, there's a perceived problem and we just create something to get over this. The results that was coming in from a lot of them, I booked, I didn't see it as something reaching the, the potential and reaching the audience that it could reach and connect with. Mm -hmm. So I decided that whatever problem it is, let's figure it out over a conversation, dig deeper and see what else is there. Mm hmm if, if there's a problem or there's a perceived problem, let's see where it's coming from mm -hmm. or where it could go. Mm -hmm. What next? So those are questions that popped up. And I said, we, we need to explore these. Mm, sure. So I decided that I'm not going to get these from a creative brief. Mm -hmm. And that was the, the beginning process for me pivoting now into the coaching space. Nice. Interesting. So what was what was the what was the outcome of that? What what was it that you were looking for that wasn't in the creative brief? Are we talking like are we talking market research, customer interviews, that sort of thing? I think 90% of the brief that not even that a high was getting, but that goes out in general. They're pretty vague. Yeah, it, it doesn't give you depth into the problem. Uh -huh. it is, that is perception. And when you sit and you start having conversation with these people, the, the marketing executive, the, the, you realize that these were just developed from perception. Something needs to be done and we're... That's totally... Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was getting at. I feel like, yeah, I mean, if it's just if it's just a group of people at the company, right, sitting down and writing down what they think the problem is, they're not going out and talking to customers. No. They're not going out and talking to people who use the product, right? They they're not they don't know what the actual problem is because they're not doing those things like customer interviews that usually mm -hmm. in my experience those kind of things, right? That's kind of what turns up the root of the problem is when you actually yeah. have conversations with the people who are using the product, who are using the service. Yeah. Because uh, focus group, another thing I'm not really a great fan of. 
Sure. <laughs> because, you know, um, what they call in the industry, the Hawthorne effect, you know, people act a certain way when they know that a certain result is expected of them. So, yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so who, who are your clients today? You mentioned that you used to work with, you know, national brands and whatnot with, with advertising as a coach. Now you've made that pivot. Who are your, who are your clients today? I, the well, wide range, um, startups, mm -hmm. um, you know, self-employed entrepreneurs and then entrepreneurs that's building, uh, multi-figure businesses. So there's a wide range. Um, I choose carefully uh, the people that I choose, I work with, you know, mm -hmm. as you know, they say, watch the door. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I still kind of keep that, that principle because if you're not really focused or disciplined to achieve your, your ideal, then you're technically wasting my time and yours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Where do you uh, where do you get your clients these days? How do you market your services? Um, now mostly networking. I am really just now getting myself in the social media space, and I've ducked it for years. <laughs> and uh, I I keep getting it in the head like you need to be in social media. So now I am really trying to you know step my my game up as it relates to social media. Yeah. Stuff. I love it. I think, yeah, I, I agree. I think that's, that's super duper important. Um, you know, the more you can be on social media, the more you can solve people's real problems, you know, people who are following you, your prospects, your ideal clients, um, you're going to, you're yeah. going to garner, you know, you're going to build goodwill, earn trust, um, and, and get more people kind of paying attention to you. Yeah. The social proof now. Yeah. That's a part of the, economy yeah yeah <laughs> it is now way. yeah but as, um referral you know that's always been a staple part sure. of you know getting getting stuff done so yeah that's been there for a while nice nice what does a typical engagement look like with you craig do how long you know how long do you work with your clients and how often do you meet with them Uh, minimum engagement, like a three month, um, maybe three or four times per the month, depend on mm -hmm. the client's need. And then in between, there's always follow up, you know, because accountability, as I said, mm -hmm. if, if you're not committed, <laughs> you know, it does, it does make sense. Yeah. 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 Um, motivation is will take you thus far, you know, if you're not disciplined you're not going to get there. If, if you're depending on motivation to achieve your goals, I mean, you're already lost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. So, you, so one of the things that you mentioned that you do for your clients um, in the, in the brief for this podcast was building strong brands. You help your clients build strong brands. Can you talk a little bit about that? What do you do? How do you work with your clients to help them build strong brands? Uh, well, branding, um, that's a part of my focus back then. So from the grown up, you know, the, for the, the archetypes, the whatever processes. So a lot of consultants, they will have like multi or a set framework that they work with. Sure. I work, I have multiple frameworks mm -hmm. and I will dissect them based on the clients. Mm -hmm. You know, I try to, you know, I often refer to the fast food strategy or method in, in both advertising and the consulting space. Yeah, you know, like people develop one thing and then they try to feed it on every client. Um, everybody don't have the same problem and then you're not really trying to get the same result for everyone. So I will break the frameworks apart uh, depending after doing a intake or having a 
you know, just maybe a just a regular conversation with the clients, see what their need is, and then we figure out something from there. Um, <clears throat> branding, you know, is, is very wide. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a term that gets thrown around a lot, but there's a lot that takes place in building a solid brand. And there's a misconception as what a brand is. Mm hmm you know to a lot of people like i create the image representing my company and oh that's my brand no mm -hmm. you know that that's developed from the perception of your audience your customer so is you is creating that base framing the, the thought process of mm -hmm. your clientele mm-hmm yeah, absolutely. I love it. Yeah, branding. Um, you know, when I when people we work on branding too as well. And one of the things that I like to say about branding is that it's simply you know, branding is not your image. It's not your logo. It's not your colorway. No. Um, it's not what you want your brand to be. A brand okay. is what it, what is in the minds and the hearts of the marketplace. Yeah, and as, and the, um, way that you, the way that you work on, the way that you create a brand is by persuading, manipulating, you know, manipulating in the best possible sense of the word, not in a negative yeah. way, but manipulating not, the yeah. emotions around no. your company. Um, People's you know, thought process. Yeah. People feel two very different things when they think about the classic examples of Microsoft and Apple, right? They're, they're two very different brands and it's, and it's, it's, it's in a, almost an emotional thing, right? And Microsoft's going to be more on the intellectual side of things and Apple's going to be more on the lifestyle kind of side of things. Yeah. Um, People buy into Apple's ecosystem, the soul of the, the, the company, the brand itself. Yep. Um, we can easily say it's the most user friendly or one of the most user friendly products mm -hmm. now on the market and for the the soul behind that is no longer with us mm -hmm. but that 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 soul still carry on in the in the products mm -hmm. it, it speaks of the systems the processes that was put in place by that person mm -hmm. like yeah. you know steve jobs he has a a, a, a mind <laughs> a, a, a brain that we can say is pretty much unmatched and mm -hmm. the, the, that legacy is still in the in, in the products almost we were like what well, almost 10 years since his passing mm -hmm. yeah there's you know his his big thing was to was always to simplify and make things more accessible to humans and just make things easy make things intuitive increase the user experience increase the customer experience and make people there was a, oh, what do they call? It? I think they call it uh, uh, delight, and delight used to be a thing that they would try to build into Apple products. How? What are What are we doing here? Not just to create a good operating system, not just to create a good phone, right? What are yeah. we What are we adding to the experience that will delight the end user? And that mm -hmm. was a thing I remember that was that was talked about at Apple a lot during the Steve Job days. You mentioned, you know, it's been about 10 years or so since his passing. One of my um, one of my kind of pet peeves um, about Apple since Steve Jobs passing is this. This is a <laughs> yeah, this, this we, is an we, Apple mouse still paints us <laughs> that is completely unusable when it's charging. Yeah. Steve Jobs is rolling in his grave that this was released. He would never have allowed this to happen. Nope. It's completely <laughs> unusable while it's charging. And so what do I have to do? I have I have two of them because I have to use yeah. one while this one's charging. 
it, it um, pains so. us, but it's, it's it's one of those things that we just yeah. Sort of, yeah, carry on tradition and do a new solution. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just you yeah. know you 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 roll with it. But I mean, if if yeah. I, I well, think... as, um, I think we just I'll, yeah, it was uh, uh, Einstein. Yeah, that says everything should be our things should be made simple, not simpler. Some something I don't remember the exact quote. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I don't remember either. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But I, I think I yeah, think I think it's things supposed to be to be made simple and not simpler. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you know, and, and stuff like this. I think this this damages a brand, right? I mean, this is it's something very small. Um, but if 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 they released ten products like this, you would you would see the damage to the Apple brand in reflected in their stock price, hundred percent. Yeah, the thing they have a very forgiving customer base. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, it's, that's Steve Jobs. That's thank you, Steve Jobs. Right. I, I don't think. Yeah. Well, it's, I don't think Tim Cook has anything to do with that. I think St Steve Jobs no. built, uh, built himself a, a crew of fanboys. <laughs> yeah. I started using Apple. I think like ninety five, ninety six, and that's all I've been ever using since. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I never used Apple. I, I grew up on computers. I grew up with a PC. I got my first one in 1991. I did computer virus research on PCs. And then in 2007, yeah. I quit uh, working in corporate for corporate America. I bought my first Apple MacBook. And I was like, this is great. And I never, I've <laughs> never used a PC since 2007. <laughs> yeah, I was... The, the the guy that was always in the belly of the the feces until the half uh -huh. came in the picture. <laughs> uh -huh. Yep. Yeah, I was was always steering things apart. Actually, my all none of the computers I had before, you know, the the, the sides I take all the sides like the casing I, I took the sides off. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> yeah, because I was always in them, and then there's always something. There's the the constant the the thing that drove me <clears throat> the, the, the final straw i was working in something because back then i used to do a lot of um video stuff production sure. Sure. and i remember i was working on this project and like three quarter of the way through i was almost done mm -hmm. and the hard drive crashed mm -hmm. <laughs> that hurts <laughs> yeah I was there, and um, back then they used to call it the 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 screen of debt, <laughs> the blue, blue screen. Blue screen of debt. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And since that, so I got. I think it was the the, the clear case. I think it was a saber tooth. Was the 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 net that that Mac that, that yeah. model? That was the <laughs> well. There was a version of OS ten Mac OS ten that was you know there's Lion. Yeah. And I think Sabretooth was maybe one of them, something like yeah. that. No, the yeah. computer, the, the computer itself. I think that was a, the, the name of the model of it. Oh, it was one of the, the, the clear, the, the brown, the round one that was. Um, I think those were just kind of, I thought maybe. Transparent. No, it was a tower. It oh, wasn't okay. the, yeah, it gotcha. wasn't the high, the, the mic, it was the, the tower. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That might've been a little before. Yeah, that's time. a whole, yeah, that, that's, that's. Yeah, that's from somewhere around them. <laughs> so, so, Craig, let's let's circle back to 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 Craig and your coaching. Tell us, you you also you know you understand about identifying target market things like that. Tell us a little bit about that. How can you know our our viewers and and listeners here who are who are maybe thinking about their brand and thinking about marketing initiatives? What can they do? How can they, um, you know, what kind of actionables um can can our listeners do to help identify their target market and why is that important well first that's the bloodline of your company your brand mm -hmm. um without a market then nothing exists um the first thing i identify what problem are you solving what problem mm -hmm. your client has what problem is in the market that needs to be solved and that problem that you 
completely confident within yourself that you have an unfair advantage to solve for your market. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, the Pareto principle, like, you know, I flip it sometimes. I tell people, like, don't try to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. If there's a problem that you think you can make better, then you take that problem, find a 20% of that, what you can own, mm -hmm. and you put it into that problem, mm -hmm. and you own that. Mm -hmm. And that's your leverage. That's what you're going to market. That's what you're going to sell to your customer. Well, if they're doing something, and you figure out the easy way to solve their problem, you take that. The problem is already there. You take it, you find a 20% and you put it into that problem. Then you own that problem and you sell it back to them. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I, I like, especially, I especially like the concept of improved and not necessarily new, right? You don't need to come up with new solutions. Yeah, to you, things. No. you just improve on, on, on the solution that you've got and you can, you know, there's, there's a number of ways you can do that, yeah. right? You can, solve their solution in less time you can solve it for cheaper you can solve it you know there's there's a few different ways that you can do that yeah and it's not just for them it's for you mm -hmm. because perhaps the scale whatever it is you are finding a problem you solve a problem at scale and just continue to iterate as you go mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's great <laughs> That is fantastic. Um, so, Craig, tell us, share share some wins with us of uh, from from your clients. What 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 kind of wins have your clients um, seen over the years as they've worked with you? Yeah, <laughs> I have multiple clients that have grown their business many folds. Um, I was having a conversation recently uh, with a client and he was like, um, he was doing some reflection mm -hmm. and he now feel that he is comfortable enough to step in my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> because he said like, he, he did other coaching, pro um, actually that client, he's a client from, I was operate in the agency mm -hmm. okay. that transition with me when I pivot into the coaching space. Nice. And while I was doing his advertising over the years, he actually had coaches that he was working with. And <laughs> he said that the things that I taught him, he has never it's all the money that he spent over the years doesn't equate to half that thing. <laughs> Cause it's like you, you not, you don't only direct, you teach. Mm -hmm. And he said, now it's like, I, I feel comfortable because I understand what it takes to build a business. What I understand what it takes to build a brand. And I learn all of that from you. Mm hmm and yeah, this guy has two companies that's doing well into the seven, eight figure. Nice. That's great, man. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Uh, Craig, what are three books that you recommend all your clients read? Wow. The Emit. Emit Revisited, um, that's a really? highly recommended book for, even if you're a seasoned entrepreneur, it's a good book to revisit every now and then. 100%. Um, good to Great. Mm -hmm. That's a very good book. And um, that's two on the business side. And the uh, brand side, I any one of Martin Newmeyer books are pretty good. Um, brand flip or 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 gap, those are two books that I would 
kind of recommend yep you got it right there great one <laughs> yeah great one yep that that will kind of i think give any entrepreneur kind of a, a, an idea of where they want to go and um join a fourth one um simon sinek's mm -hmm. start with why <laughs> It's a great yeah, one. Th those will give you um pretty good direction. Nice. Awesome, Craig. This has been great, man. Is there is there anything that you would like to chat about that we have not yet had an opportunity to touch upon? Uh well. Find something. My 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 brain is all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um I love I the very, topic, you know. I have a very expanded knowledge base, so j just throw it, throw it out. Show <laughs> 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 something out and we'll see where we go. Um, gosh, let's see. Well, you know, let's let's talk about uh, vision and vision and mission. Tell us about. Tell us about how you work with your clients on vision and mission. Why is that important? And how do you help your clients define and focus in and hone in on those things? Uh, well, uh, again, those two things, they kind of one in the same in mm -hmm. my perspective. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So how are they, how are they one in the same? I think a lot of people would see vision as a kind as kind of like, where is this company going to be? What are we going to do with this company in, you know, five years? Whereas mission is more like, what is, you know, what is our raison d'etre? What, why are we here? Why are we doing what we're doing? I feel like a lot of people would see those as two different things. How are they, how are they? Yeah, the they're, they're, components mm -hmm. that shape both of them to the same end goal mm -hmm. in my opinion so for mission um it's a continuous process for me um mm -hmm. you know a lot of people will do, oh my mission is this and that's what you're working again it's stuff that you iterate as you go mm -hmm. your, your mission can change your vision can change because now we're in a very agile market mm -hmm. you know the, the economy things are swaying the you know we are dealing with the emergence of technology things are moving fast mm -hmm. so there are process that will and i expect that you will have iteration in them as you go mm -hmm. So it's not something for me that is set in stone. Like, okay, this is my mission and this is what we're going to lock ourselves in and focus on that. Sure. Like, yes, there's a hand goal. You have your ideal that this is the future state that I want to get to. Mm -hmm. These are the, 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 the things that we're going to do to get there, but those things change. Oh, sure. Your yeah. mission will change. Your vision will change, but keep, top of ed your future state mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's like the old sports saying keep your eye keep your eye on the ball <laughs> yeah that's, that's the reason why it said for me like they're one in the same sure okay that makes sense so how do you so going back to the original question how do you help your clients develop their vision and mission and how do you help your clients execute on that vision and that mission well problems are broken down for me in tears mm -hmm. um you know what how achievable are things mm -hmm. in your process and mm -hmm. uh, normally i'll do like a scoring and the problems so you, all the problems are there you list them out you write them down we have them on paper and then i'll run through a scoring process 
what are the immediate things that need attention mm -hmm. and how achievable are them now with the resources, the, with your knowledge, the skills, wh whatever you have now, mm -hmm. how applicable are they, that to achieve those? Mm -hmm. And I will lay things out in that manner. So as you, you mm -hmm. go, okay, I need to learn this new skill. I need to develop this. Okay, I need to get this resort to um, resource to this stage before I can move it to this problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a process for me and not trying to just run into the game and just trying to, you know, kick the ball wherever direction you turn. It's strategically sure. aligning yourself with the problems that you have in front of you. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it, man. That, um, yeah, that makes sense. And you got to like, that's kind of the stuff you, you, you iterate on that too, right? Because it's not going to huh? stay the same forever. Yeah. It's not going to stay the same. As I said, everything is, is, is liquid. We're in a very fluid mm -hmm. growth stage right now. And it's going to get more agile than it is right now. We're, we're, at the tip of the heights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you look around at the you see, like I uh, I was having a conversation and you know the whole thing came up with the AI things and where where things are now and and I was explaining that people are just overwhelmed because now AI been introduced to us in a state of leisure mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if we go back to i would say oh two oh three mm -hmm. um that's when we most people really come face to face with the emergence of ai mm -hmm. you know after 9 11 things change and all of these things when you go into the airport and you start going and out that it's ai at work mm -hmm. It's just that now we're in a different um, state of mind. Yeah. Then we view it as something that's necessary to protect us. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it gives us peace of mind. So we weren't thinking about it the way we are now because now, okay, it's at scale mm -hmm. and it's now being introduced to we in the form of leisure it's like it's it's now in the hands of everyone every turn you turn it there so like people just now overwhelmed because it's just in your face but it's always been there sure. we're now in a singular universe we're not in the world no more where it was over there when we we're over here we are in a singular universe now the problem is how do we coexist because mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not going anywhere now nope <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's a tool and that's the thing like people just need to understand that this thing is, is just a tool for the efficiency of human sure. you know everything we use now it's it's the hammer, the hammer of 2023 <laughs> yeah you're in washington i'm in miami right now we're communicating mm-hmm we're using AI now. <laughs> it's a tool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. I love it. I love it. This is great stuff. Um, Craig, listen, man, where can, where can our listeners and viewers connect with you online? LinkedIn, um, Instagram, Twitter. I am Craig Martin. And linkedin and instagram and um my name and linkedin awesome and also uh, the, the, for the, the thing like well for for linkedin there's a a couple of people say that they have to actually type in craig martin consultant or coach uh-huh because there's so much yeah my name is it one seems like a common ones. name <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just a very, very common, very common name. Yeah. 
Well, we'll we'll put yeah. uh, we'll put links to all of that on the the show notes page, Craig. I know I've got I've got your LinkedIn, I've got your Instagram. I'll need to pick up on your your Twitter uh, account. I don't think I have a link to that, but we'll get that. Yeah, we'll I show. am not. As I say, I'm just really getting myself active on social media. So the sure. most active it is right now since I really started pushing myself out is on Instagram and yeah. um, LinkedIn. That's great. Um, but you know, according to the the research in for for where I am now, LinkedIn and Twitter needs to be my focal outlets. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, LinkedIn especially, I think for coaches, LinkedIn is going to be a big one for you. Yeah, as it's it's um becoming now what the we said the graphic design space was back in the early 2000s a <laughs> very saturated market but the thing there are some great um coaches that yeah. I, I i come across you know i happen to have conversation with some phenomenal coaches but again it's just a sift true find someone that's really focused and will help you get to that ideal space that you're trying to get to mm -hmm. you know it's it's again and their clients that have a misconception of what a coach really supposed to be it's like even though the, the, the coach and the mentor i tell people like a mentor directs you where you need to go mm -hmm. a coach guides you to where you need to be mm -hmm. <laughs> you know it's two different process but if you're not at that space within yourself that i need to move from here to there <laughs> mm -hmm. sometimes it doesn't work for you or you may become a little bit overwhelmed because mentally you're not prepared for it mm -hmm. um there are coaches that's gonna drive you like i am gonna drive you because if you're trying to achieve something, you need to be disciplined and accountable. You know, as I said, if mm -hmm. you're depending on motivation to take you where you want to be, that means you're already lost. Motivation is a very passive state of mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A very fluid state of mind. Like motivation comes and goes very easily. Yeah. Especially the, it goes very easily. Discipline, <laughs> it goes very easily. And the thing like motivation... 99% of the time is coming from a stimuli. Mm -hmm. You know, something gets you to that space. That's a good, yeah, that's a good point. I think it was, I want to I think it was Tony Robbins, I think that said motivation is like bathing. You've got to do it every day. You've got to, yeah. you know, you've got to watch something motivational or read something motivational and, and practice being motivated every day. Yeah. Well, that's why I, kind of lean to discipline mm -hmm. you know make it a part of you get it in your blood yeah because once that becomes a part of you you know that you being motivated can lead you to becoming disciplined mm -hmm. but you you make that a part of you you no longer depending on an external force to get you moving to take you to that space that you need to be Mm hmm yeah yeah i uh jocko willink is a uh, one of my you know i wouldn't say one of my coaches I, I i don't you know i don't know him personally i've never met the guy but he's definitely kind of a you know a mentor of mine i read his books and, and watch him on youtube and his uh one of his great books and in, in my opinion a wonderful book is discipline equals freedom yep that's just what it is. You see, mentor, a mentor, a coach, sometimes doesn't have to be somebody that you're in contact with. Doesn't have to be someone exactly. you have a relationship with. Exactly. And you choose that hero, and all you need to do is just look at the the the, the hero's journey, and mm -hmm. you just apply those same <laughs> strategies to you. As I said, success, failure, they all leave a trail. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And now we have information. It's, it's 
it's very accessible. And again, I, you know, and I will put this out there because a lot of people think that, okay, something is accessible, it is valuable. Take that extra step to get valuable information because a lot of entrepreneurs, people in general, fail from um, an abundance of the wrong information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Accessibility doesn't equal value. And, yeah. you know, that's something that needs to stay at the top of mind when new information is entering in your in your space. You know, focus more on what you get in and not what you put out. Yeah, I think that's yeah, that's that's a great that's a great little coaching tip there. Quantity does not necessarily equal quality. Yeah. That's a, that's a good said, the, the, the availability of information kind of push people in a lazy state of mind. Mm -hmm. You know, you type something on your phone, you, you, everything is there. And the first thing comes up like, okay, this is it. No, dig deeper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, that's where you're going to find the goal. Totally. You know, it's not going to be on the surface. What, whatever you see on the surface is there for a reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, not a lot of people go further than there. No. So if you want to separate yourself, just take the extra minute, two minutes, and just dig a little deeper and find something else. Because yep. as I said, if you're doing something or you're accessing new information. You're learning something. First, figure out what leverage that's giving you. Mm -hmm. Yep. If this is this separating me from my competitor, is this giving me advantage? Is this giving me an unfair advantage over everyone else? Where is this taking me? Mm -hmm. You can even you, know. you can even flip that frame a little bit and say, is this is this actually helping my clients? Is this actually helping, you know, my ideal client, people who would be my clients? Is this actually helping future clients? When you're talking about, so you you were saying, you know, you're starting to do the social media thing and starting to market yourself on social media and and build a reputation and work on your brand, right? That's that's all. That's what that's what that is. Is you're working yeah, with your brand. Just, yeah. And that's a great question to ask as you're as you're creating content and you're putting content out on social media is is this actually helping my yeah. ideal clients, my future clients, or is this just me talking about stuff? Yeah, but it's not just for the clients, it's also for you. Sure. You know, what what leverage are you you gaining? Mm -hmm. Every single piece of information that I consume what leverage is it giving me mm -hmm. everything that you do for the day because most people as i said 99 percent of people are currently where they are because they get up and do 99 percent of the things they did the day before <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> yeah it's like we are technically just following a pattern yeah, you know, um, like uh, the other day we were having a conversation, and then the the whole thing of, you know, um, not a client but someone that I was talking to, he was saying he he's trying to build his business, mm -hmm. get his business to the state where he has more loyal customers, mm -hmm. and I was telling him that I said no customer is loyal. Mm -hmm. then he was saying but he now start making examples you know of brands and people that are committed to brands and i and you know he we reference him himself i said our brain doesn't like change our subconscious mind doesn't like change mm -hmm. and once you're comfortable with something it's not gonna push you to get out of that comfort zone because 90% of the decisions that we make, that's made by our subconscious mind, not our active mind. Yeah. And I said, you're comfortable 
or you believe that you're loyal to a brand because no one else has produced something in front of you that enticed you enough to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your, your mind becomes comfortable, but you're not loyal to that brand. <laughs> that other <laughs> brand, that other product just doesn't pop up in front of your face as yet. Uh-huh. Yeah. Give it time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We all consider, oh, we allow your Apple users. Yeah, because, you know, they, they, they made a promise. They, they have kept their end of the promise up till now. And nobody has disrupted the space yet for us to say, oh, mm -hmm. I need to look deeper over there. It, it just don't happen. Mm -hmm. But in technicality, there is, there's no, nothing as a loyal customer. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting way to look at it. It'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, in, in 10, 20, 30 years, um, you know, who is, who is going to take over the, the computer market, you know, because Apple's, Apple's not going to reign supreme forever. And same thing with no. often PCs and windows. But, um, back to what I said earlier, the, the, the soul is still in the brand mm -hmm. <laughs> and if they maintain, yeah, they will, you know, stand up for a while. And if they're smart enough, mm -hmm. take out the other guy that 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 that, that rise to take that space. Just because now, you know, as it is right now, most companies are acquiring businesses, and most company acquire other companies <laughs> for two reasons. Mm -hmm. Is either they're gonna they, they they acquire that company for the equity that that company had built in the market, mm -hmm. or they had they they buy the company out to kill it. Mm -hmm. I've built this equity up here, and now you're stepping on my ground. So, <laughs> is either I'm gonna take you out? are I'm going to take that little leverage that you got over there <laughs> and bring it under my umbrella. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, Craig, I want to be, I want to be respectful of your time. I know we're coming up on the hour here. Um, I want to thank you again for, for making time to chat with me. Craig Martin, acclimatedminds.com. will have links to your website, to social media, uh, your LinkedIn, your Instagram, uh, and everything else on the show notes page for this. Um, Craig, man, I, I thank you again. I appreciate you making time to, to chat with us here on The Remarkable Coach. It's about spreading knowledge and helping people to build their business. As I said, I am trying to reach or impact at least yeah. a million people to make a change in their journey. You know, that's just where things are. I love it, brother. Big goals. It's great. To, to, and thank it, you. It, it's, it seems big, but I think with the... The, the, the space that we're in now, there are some possibilities of, of reaching the milestone, you know, social you media. We get there, do things right. Uh, we should be able to help some people change their lives. And, you know, as I said, the goal is to take people out of their space, you mm -hmm. know, exit to freedom. You don't need to be running a business for half your life. You got to enjoy <laughs> we're only we only we only get the life once yeah and all right that's, a, that, that, that's an important thing well thank you uh of course as always to our viewers and listeners as well you guys are fantastic um i'm michael pacheco with craig martin this has been the remarkable coach we'll see you guys next time take care